So Rastafari is that expression of Pan-Africanism that brings now to the table a black god. I, I don't see them as complimentary. I see Pan-African as the wide field of Africans globally. Wherever we are, we constitute the Pan-African world. And the rest, there's a continuum of movements that have come up over time in this Pan-African world. So whether it was the Black Power Movement, the Black Consciousness Movement, the Civil Rights Movement in America, the Anti-Apartheid Movement in South Africa, these are all movements of Black Africans asserting their right to be and claiming African redemption. So Rastafari is that expression of Pan-Africanism that brings now to the table a black God. You understand? It's not separate and apart from our complementary two. But on a continuum, at this point in time that Rastafari emerged, November 2nd, 1930, as prophetic fulfillment, fulfillment of prophecy. So the seekers and sailors, the elders in Jamaica and the US and so on, were seeking for this black king that would be crowned, knowing what it would mean. It turns out that this king now, an empress, is highly Selassie the first. So it is not, it is something that we don't expect to be, be, be all end all of anything. Living in Africa has made me either stand Rastafari even in a different sense in that you have people who, most of us would have been born and have, would have grown in some kind of Christian household with some kind of Christian teachings. But in Africa, you will find Rastafari who came out of that. Oh, even here on the, the Safa, we have a, a, a brethren from Guyana too, who grew up as a Muslim. Yeah? And then you find you discover our brothers and sisters in, say, Senegal, who don't even say Rastafari at all, but they are Jap people. And when you look at them, they look like Rastafari. And, but they explain themselves as their being to Islam, but I and I are to Christianity. So you find all these kindred irits in the African terrain of Pan-Africanism. And also, I pay attention to the fact that His Majesty lumps together Africa and Asia in a lot of his teachings uh, and planning for the way forward. So I don't have the same view even as about the Chinese. A lot of people cross the Chinese, they're flooding the market with cheap goods, this, that. If Africa were to do what China is doing, if in Africa then, if the African leaders and the Caribbean and wherever black people are, were to think of ourselves in a Pan-African sense, we are more than the Chinese and they are not any more intelligent than we are. We could achieve the same kind of aims and goals that China is doing now. First, feeding herself. And then China, well, China is doing what people, China is exporting what they have, the people with skills. You understand? Africa needs to learn how to do what China did. The Pan-African world, not the African continent, the Pan-African world. Mm. Yeah? And so it is Rastafari, right? That has to guide and lead. I see us as the vanguard of the Pan-African movement, if you want to say that. Yeah. Yes, I. My name is Aijania Christian. And for me, the biggest cultural impact in a way is to come to Ethiopia. It's an irony to come to Ethiopia and be called Jamaican when outside of Ethiopia, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are known as Ethiopians.